Today's video is about the history of Copenhagen because everybody knows Copenhagen is packed with history. Yellow! joke of the day. No, I'm just playing. You guys like this? I got the, my, believe it or not, this is a birthday present that my mom bought me about six, seven years ago. It's a brass platoon she found in a western store and she sent it to me. So that was pretty cool. I never spit in it. I just kind of like to have it on a, on display. I thought, hey, we're talking about history. We're talking about old stuff today. Why not bring out the brass platoon? But no, I'm not going to spit in it. This thing's a pain in the ass to freaking clean out, so I'm going to spit in that. We'll have that on display down here, but I think I'll just here spit in my Confederate camo bud jug since we're all Confederate camoed out today. Keep it hillbilly style. Before we get into the history, I want to talk a little bit about what we talked about last week in the Outlaw Shit Talking Contest. A lot of people entered, and I said I was going to pick five for the Mud Jug Minute this week, but that's not going to happen. I actually only picked two. I was a little embarrassed for you guys, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Not to be sad like a dick or anything, but I was a little bit embarrassed because most of you guys, you know, it seemed like you filmed it at night, your parents were sleeping or something and you were whispering, and the only thing you did was sit in front of a camera and just be like, oh, well, you fucking suck, bro. I fucking hate you, man. You fucking suck, and I, I hope you die. Yeah. And then it was just like, it was really awkward, and, and you probably would not want me to put that on this video because everybody just might go hate on you. So I did pick two people. Now, these two people are already kind of well known, but I am gonna put them in the Mud Jug Minute and this is kind of what you should do. I want you guys to get creative. I want you to make a skit out of it. I want you to go outside and, and think of something funny. I don't want you to sit in front of a camera and just talk shit. Keyword is creative, so please be creative. I'm gonna run this contest again, but for this Mud Jug Minute, I'm going to show the two people that won last week and I'm gonna run this one more time. And if you guys post a video response to this video, Leave me outlaw shit talking responses, and I'm telling you again, guys, be creative because the most creative person will be on. And, and you know, I'm not even gonna put a number on it. Whoever's creative, if all of them are creative, I'll put them all in next mud jug minute. You guys are gonna like it. So, leave a video response to this video if you're gonna get creative and you're gonna do something cool. But for now, let's roll the mud jug minute clips and let's show the two winners. It's time for a mud jug minute. Hello! I'm outlaw! Yeah! Keep it fucking freaking hillbilly! You gotta Fuck you, dude! You're a piece of shit! You small packing motherfucker! You should be packing fucking pouches in your mouth! You pussy little fucking bitch! Keep it freaking hillbilly! And guess what, motherfucker? Blow me! Fuck you! Keep it fucking hillbilly, bitch! Yo, outlaw. Old man don't need a minute or 30 seconds to cut you down, to tear you up. I just got four little words for you. Four little words. That's it. Is it in yet? Is it in yet? Four inches big. Love with the gators. I just have to. You might have, but I sure as hell didn't. Four inches big. That's it for my jug minute. Ha, sick as tits. So Tow Truck and Dipper and Copenhagen Madness, that's chatty, uh, they got a shout out. Go check them out. Uh, their links are on the screen in the Mojug Minute or check their links in the description box below. They're the winners this week. But like I said again, post a video response to this video with your creative response and maybe you will be in next Vidski. So for this Copenhagen history video, we are dipping. Ah, Copenhagen long cut. We got ourselves a nice fatty in here and I think I'm gonna pack me a killer filler Oh, there's Copenhagen. Let's pack a, a little filler here real fast. And, mm, can't get better than frickin' Copenhagen. Just a, just a, just a tad. Just a, just, just a, just a pinch. Just a pinch. Mm, mm. Yeah, something about that Copenhagen, man, it is so frickin' good. So, 
and Copenhagen long cut. I don't care what all you say. Some of you guys are really young, and you're not even supposed to be dipping, but when you get older, this is the shit you're going to be dipping. Guarantee MT. This stuff is too good to be true. I did a poll on my Facebook page last week on what dip you guys wanted to see me do for the Copenhagen history video, and all you guys uh, did the most uh, votes on the Copenhagen long cut, so that's what I'm doing. I have no problem with doing Copenhagen long cut. This stuff is the shit. Excuse me, now it is called Copenhagen Original, so you gotta call it Copenhagen Original. It used to just be Copenhagen Long Cut, but I think in 2010 they switched it to Copenhagen Original, so. It's the Copenhagen Original, now a lot of people say, oh, what's your favorite dip? Oh, I say Copenhagen Long Cut. They're like, what, what, which one? Wintergreen, you know, so. If I say Copel C or Copenhagen Long Cut, usually I mean the Copenhagen Original. Shit's good. Let's jump into the camoed out DeLorean and go back in time, shall we? Let's get into this Copenhagen frickin' history. Now, I wanna start with this. Everybody asks me, what is the uh, WC or the CW on the can? Everybody says that, you know, you see the CW or the WC on the can right there. Everybody says, oh, what is that? What does that even mean, you know? Well, the creator of Copenhagen, his name was George Wayman. He decided to name his company Copenhagen, and the WC stands for Wayman's Copenhagen. So there's a little bit of history for you. Wayman's Copenhagen is what that WC means on the cans. So that's their logo. Wayman's Copenhagen is the man who started it all. So thank God for George Wayman. As you can see on every Copenhagen can, they all say satisfaction since 1822. That's because George Wayman himself started producing Copenhagen snuff out of Pittsburgh, Pens Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1822. Now that's a lot older than I am, hundreds of years, but I don't know if anybody was around before 1969 that had uh, different types of Copenhagen out there. If you do, because uh, Copenhagen snuff in 1969 was introduced into the fine cut snuff, and what you see here, uh, Copenhagen snuff, uh, in this brand, in the fine cut version, was introduced in 1969. Before that, I do know that they had the jars of Copenhagen stuff. They had jars that had uh, the dip in it and things like that. Um, anybody that knows uh, if it was the same taste or the same cut or the same whatever, let me know in the comments. But that's as far back as I go. If you don't know how dip even got started, it actually got started by the Swedes over in Sweden. They started with the snoots and they brought that over to America in the 19th century and that's how we got started on dip. The Copenhagen snuff was around for a long time, 30 or more years, and then they decided, oh, we're going to start coming out and we're going to introduce Copenhagen long cut. And that's what we're dipping today. This is the old can without the freaking warning label that says we're going to die. But uh, Copenhagen Long Cut was introduced in 1997. So, we had these two dips for a while. We had the Copenhagen Snuff, the Fine Cut, and the Copenhagen Long Cut. The two natural dips, that's all they ever needed back in the day. They didn't have all these flavors and stuff like that. So these are the two dips they had all the way up until 2001. Now Skull, in 1984, started the Skull Bandit series, which is our, the pouches. And that broke ground for Copenhagen to introduce in 2001 what we know as Copenhagen pouches, which really looks similar to the Copenhagen Long Cut can, but uh, it's a little bit darker. Uh, still in the fiberboard, and um, yeah, Copenhagen pouches introduced in 2001. These were the three main dips all the way until 2004 when they said, we need more freaking flavor, and they came out with this beautiful dip, as we know, Copenhagen straight. Yes, it was called Copenhagen. It wasn't Cope quite yet. Uh, Copenhagen Straight came out in 2004. Now, about two years later in 2006, I believe it was November, if I can remember collect correct, correctly, correctly, they came out with the Cope series, okay? Now the Cope series was uh, three dips that they came out with. Uh, you know, dip was flying off the shelves, people were trying to quit smoking, it was really big back in 2006. And that is when they switched the Copenhagen Straight over to Cope Straight in the plastic can. Um, Copenhagen Straight was in the fiberboard can before, and then they started, uh, they introduced the, the plastic cans with the Cope series, which was Cope Straight, and they also came out with Cope Smooth Hickory, Cope Smooth Hickory, the wood dip as I like to call it, and the Cope Whiskey Blend. All of these were in November of 2006, 
all three of these Coke series were introduced. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the, the one of the greatest things that ever came out, and that is Copenhagen Black, the bourbon flavor that came out in actually 2002, and they ran it till about 2006, and it wasn't in a black can. It was still Copenhagen Black, but it was actually in a yellow, yellow, uh, creamy type can that had a cowboy uh, pinch and some dip in the front of it. Now, that was run until about 2006, they stopped it, and then that's when everybody got excited again because in 2010, they ran Copenhagen Black for a trial, and then they reintroduced it in 2011 in uh, August, I believe, and, um, or no, it was, I think it was September. Uh, September, they came black, black, they came black. They, Copenhagen went black, <laughs> once you go black, you'd never go back, but they did. And uh, Copenhagen Black got reintroduced, and now Copenhagen Black, you can find it in just some areas. They they ran it for seasonal, and now they're not even doing it seasonal. Now they're just selling it in the states that uh, were were high, were most most the the Copenhagen Black was sold. A lot of people a lot of people be dipping this nowadays. The Copenhagen Wintergreen, I catch myself dipping this quite often. The Copenhagen Wintergreen was introduced by itself in two, oh, excuse me two thousand and nine. And um, this came out and just took over. I mean, the Copenhagen Wintergreen, everybody stopped dipping Grizzly, Skull, and Copenhagen Wintergreen took over the Wintergreen market for sure. Because that was the same time of uh, the same time that Grizzly kind of went to the, the plastic cans and Grizzly, or excuse me, the with the with the tin lid, and it kind of switched its flavor with the Grizzly. And Copenhagen Wintergreen, um, they produced it just for the plastic can, and it took over big time. People loved the shit and. Uh, Frickin' Copenhagen Wintergreen, man. That's one of the best Wintergreens out there. Grizzly Wintergreen, you know, and, 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 and things alike, they are good, but nothing nowadays beats Copenhagen Wintergreen, in my opinion. And of course, 2010, they came out, they, they shocked everybody, and they said, we're gonna come out with an, uh, a, just a natural dip. You know, Grizzly Natural and all these other natural dips were doing pretty good, and I mean, Copenhagen Long Cut and Snuff, they're natural dips, but they have their own distinct flavor. So they wanted to come out with just a natural flavor dip. It's a, you know, if you, if you haven't dipped before or anything like that, natural is a true natural bland flavor. And in 2010, Copenhagen came out with the extra long cut Copenhagen natural. Now, speaking of long cuts and, and different cuts, I forgot to say that when Copenhagen Black was introduced, that you can see this is the mid cut version that I have. It's got, a, sorry, I shot it with a BB gun a couple years ago. Sitting on top of my tower, and I was like, I'm gonna shoot it with the BB gun. I don't know why, I'm just dumb like that. But uh, when Copenhagen Black was first introduced in 2002 to 2006, it was uh, it was two, it was um, it was a mid cut. Uh, it was a mid cut. It was a little um, little longer than snuff fine cut, and a little shorter than a long cut. So it was just uh, it was that perfect pinchability, and it was pretty damn good. And they had the mid cut, and then when they came back out with it in 2011, it was uh, strictly long cut. Can't forget the newest dip to date came out in 2012. Everybody knows it as Copenhagen Southern Blend. Some good ass shit right here. Copenhagen Southern Blend. Everybody's loving it. It's flying off the shelves. It's selling good in every area, and it's still not found in all the areas yet. I know there's still some states out there that can't get it. Southern Blend came out 2012. That's the newest dip Copenhagen came out with. And now, they're talking about Copenhagen Mint. There are some pictures flying around the internet uh, of Copenhagen Mint and um, when that will be coming out. Mint has a market. You know, a lot of people do dip mint. I don't personally dip mint all the time, but I do like a little mint every now and then. So Copenhagen mint, that, that'd be pretty good, you know? Uh, going all the way from Copenhagen snuff, and now they're coming out with all these different brands of flavors and stuff. It's really exciting for uh, dippers out there and stuff, but you know, Copenhagen mint might come out and everybody will be excited uh, about it and we'll see how it sells. A lot of these dips that I talked about, they're not available in certain areas anymore, like the black. You know, it's only available in certain areas. The Southern Blend only available in certain areas right now. The Copenhagen, uh, the Cope Whiskey and the Cope Smooth Hickory. I have a buddy in Colorado that the only thing he dips is Cope Whiskey, and he still gets it. What the fuck's got a gnat flying around here? Good lord, it's probably this damn dip behind me. It smells so bad or something. But uh, the Cope Whiskey, he gets it ordered in. They still do sell them in certain areas, and the Cope Southern uh, Smooth Hickory, I haven't seen this in a long time, but I know people still do get it. I don't know why, this shit tastes like, it's nasty. But, uh, yeah, so some of these dips, um, they don't, you know, it's hard, they're hard to find. So don't ask me, you know, if I if I have them. These are just old cans. You can see they don't have the warning labels on them or anything. But uh, yeah, they're they're good. I mean, Copenhagen. A lot of people got mad 
whenever they started coming out with all these flavors. They're like, oh, I just want it to be Copenhagen and Long Cut. I just want it to be Copenhagen and Snuff. But you know what? It's a company. They got to grow. And if they want to stay around, yes, they're going to have to move into these different markets with these different flavors that people are, uh, like their their sister company, uh, or brother company, whatever you want to call them, Skull. They have all the freaking flavors and they leave, you know, the fruity flavors and stuff to them. But, uh, you know, coming out with these, these natural and winter grains and stuff like that, they're pretty damn good in my opinion. So keep on doing what you're doing, Copenhagen. You're doing a damn good job. And thank God for George Wayman for giving us this beautiful dip, Copenhagen. All right, I hope you guys like that Copenhagen history. If you guys want to know any more history, I might know it. I am kind of a dip encyclopedia in some way. Uh, just uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any more questions and stuff like that, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um... I did want to say, the Facebook page, the Outlaw Facebook page that we got hit over 5,000 likes a couple days ago, and I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for that. Keep going over there and, and like it. We got some cool, I, I throw up some meme pictures and stuff all the time, and uh, people like them, so um, Facebook over 5,000 likes. All the links to my social networks are below, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Follow me on over there. Um, also, want to let you know I'm running low on frickin' Confederate camo, keep it frickin' hill, Billy merch again. So, you better get over to keepithillbilly.com if you want some merch because uh, it looks sick as tits and it's running low again, guys. I'm sorry, I just can't keep it on the shelves freaking long enough. Calling all you Florida crackers out there, I'm going to freaking Orlando, Florida uh, next week for Playlist Live in Orlando for the weekend. Um, I can't remember what day it is exactly, but uh, I'm flying down there on the 20th of March and I'm coming back the 26th. So if you guys are in the Orlando area, you're in that area, come and see me. I'm going to be uh, um, in the Orlando area, and I'll be tweeting and stuff like that where I'm at and all that crap. So maybe we can meet up and, and chill like Vils ends. Chill. Chill like Vil ends? Chill. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> all right, y'all. That's it for me. Can you even see my mud jug? Can you see it? Oh, camo works. Can't see it. <laughs> all right. We're spitting in the Confederate camo mud jug today. We did have our... Uh, trusty brass spittoon today though if you guys got any of these i know there's a bunch of them out there you know the old western brass spittoon send me some pictures of yours on twitter and uh, i like to see them i like dip history like that thanks y'all for tubing in my name is outlaw of course and always remember no matter what you're doing it's not just a saying it's a lifestyle keep it freaking hillbilly I, I I didn't say nothing. I, I don't want to make out with George Wayman. I I'm just playing with you. I I don't. I'm not gay. I, I'm not. What we just. Ah!